My Lords, it, it, it's an honour to follow the Naval Lord, Lord Bridges, with his unique insight into, into the processes uh, which have been going on. Um, but I hope his solution, his drastic solution, won't have to come about. My Lords, I've spared your Lordships a speech in our two most recent Brexit debates, so my last contribution was in our debate on the 14th of January this year. Listening to and reading those previous debates, and previous debates, I continue to be stuck, struck by the large majority of your Lordships who still believe that the project of European integration has brought peace to Europe and that it has been and is good for our trade, that in short it is a good thing. My Lords, one important influence which prevents many people from seeing the EU as an idea which has failed is the BBC. Here I must declare an interest as the secretary of a cross-party group of Eurosceptic MPs which has been sponsoring research into the BBC's EU coverage by the Newswatch Media Monitor. Yeah. An almost unbelievable statistic to emerge from this work is that there appears to have been only one programme since the referendum which has examined the opportunities of Brexit. Not promoted those opportunities, my Lords, just examined them and the BBC can't point us to any others. BBC interviewees since the referendum have never been less than two to one against Brexit, and sometimes up to six to one. Going further back, my lords, of 4,275 guests talking about the EU on Radio 4's flagship Today programme between 2005 and 2015, only 132, or 3.2%, were supporters of the UK's withdrawal from the EU. Yet the British public, British public opinion in favour of withdrawal was hovering around 40 to 50 per cent for the whole of that period. My Lords, I suppose we just have to accept that the BBC is the guardian newspaper of the airwaves, which is a pity because it should be dispassionately helping the British people to see through the mess that our politicians and, and um, um, bureaucrats are making of Brexit. But it isn't, my Lords. It's batting for the Remain side. Coming to that mess, my Lords, there remains a very simple and speedy way out of it, which I have mentioned before, and with which every leading businessman who understands Europe and with whom I have discussed it agrees. Businessmen know how to do deals, my Lords, but the government clearly doesn't. So I'll try again. We should sidestep the Commission and make a public offer to the people of Europe, Var Koripa and the Council. We should offer them continuing reciprocal residence for, say, two years. This is more in their interest than ours because there are some four million of them and only 1.2 million of us, of, of us. We should also offer to continue our present free trade together after the 29th of March but under the auspices of the WTO, not the Luxembourg Court. This would get rid of the Irish border problem and is not the same as trading under normal WTO terms in the event of a no deal. It is also more in their and their exporters' interest than ours because under normal WTO terms, they would pay us some 14 billion per annum in new tariffs, tariffs where we would pay them only 6 billion. And that's according to a recent government answer, HL 13121, on the 23rd of January this year to me. When that has been agreed, we could discuss how much money we may give them, which should, of course, be nothing if it isn't agreed. We could also go on collaborating over intelligence and on any scheme which is in the national interest of both our peoples. But we would agree to do that later as a sovereign nation. My Lords, of course, the sticking point for the Commission in Brussels will be allowing EU exporters to continue in free trade with us under the WTO rather than the Luxembourg Court. But leaving the EU should end that Court's jurisdiction anyway. So why not do it now? Why is the Government so reluctant to ignore clauses 2 to 5 of Article 50, which is what forces us to deal through the Commission? when we have resiled from 52 multilateral treaties since 1998. See the government answer to me 
27th of November, HL 11478. And the Luxembourg court has said that we are free to do, do so. Why don't we just tell Brussels and the people of Europe that this is our offer? And if they don't accept it, we will leave on the 29th of March anyway, not pay them the 39 billion we, billion we have foolishly discussed, and look forward to pocketing another 8 billion per, per annum under normal WTO tariffs. Of course, my lords, the silliest thing the House of Commons could do on Wednesday is to rule out such a no deal. My lords, I really would be grateful if the noble lord, the minister, would reply to this concept when he comes to wind up. I would ask him not to repeat what his colleague, the noble lord, Lord Cullinan, has said in the past, to the effect that we can't break with Article 50 because we are a law-abiding country and Article 50 says we have to negotiate with the Commission. My lords, surely the government can see that we will never get a sensible or honest deal out of the Commission because its only aim in life is to stop us making a success of Brexit and therefore uh, to prolong its unfortunate project. So why don't we just do it, my lords? And incidentally, why should it take more than a fortnight 